This is L.A. Wildcats quarterback Josh Johnson, and this is the XSL Show. Welcome football fans, this is for the love of football, this is the road to 2022, and this is the XFL show, I'm Alan, and I'm Bryant, whether you bobble the ball when you hit the ground after you thought you caught it, or you give up a lead to an undefeated team in a big moment as a quarterback, you need to remember this, you need to get back up after that and keep doing the work this is the way and this is episode 144 we are tops guys this week bryant because well, you've got those cards ready to unbox that we talked about last week yes tops cards yes we are tops well we are not tops guys these are tops guys cards cards guys either way alan um I'm very mad at you and your Steelers, by the way. Just let the man have it. What do you guys? You guys are like three games up. Just let him have it. Gilbert. Yeah, the Steelers didn't, I guess, need that one, but I didn't want to see them lose to Garrett Gilbert, who played admirably last week for the Dallas Cowboys. Should have played in the XFL. He should have. He was he was the MVP of the AAF. You know, they put on CBS MVP of the AAF. Was he officially named the MVP of that league? Did was that? An award that was given away. They didn't even finish the season. How do they have an MVP? The AAF ceased to exist after, like, the XFL at least extended their, like, corporate headquarters, right, past the cancellation of the season. The AAF, like, closed the doors. There was no more AAF after week seven. There was so, no awards. I don't know how they would. That was an unofficial award CBS acknowledged last week during the broadcast. So uh, uh, Fox did not declare P.J. Walker XFL MVP when he got some playing time earlier this season. But uh, well, XFL, they didn't get a chance, though, too. He only got like two did. plays. Yeah, he was out of there before. <laughs> but XFLers in the NFL last weekend, very active. We saw Kenny Robinson get his first tackle and, and all sorts of players getting playing time. But we're going to definitely talk about that Donald Parham play because I know, Bryant, you've had it on your mind all week long. We're going to get into it. We're going to open up those box of tops cards. We're going to have some fun today. 724-565-4XFL. And when I say we're going to have fun today, we mean tonight. This is a new streak. It's like three or four shows in a row recording super late at night, Bryant, when the wives and kid go to sleep. And we're just here to talk some XFL football. All the important stuff everybody needs to know this week. It it really is something that I think we're just going to have to... It's like XFL after dark, right? You know, it used to be Pac-12 after dark. Now it's Pac-12 for brunch, which is my new favorite thing, by the way. Pac-12 for brunch. Greatest thing in the world. Uh, But this is going to be XFL after dark. Also, it's also probably due with... We're both at home all day long with our spouses. So before we could get away with, hey, I need to do this XFL show. Now it's... (laughs) You wait till I'm away from you and in, in, in bed. That's how it works. But we're still getting it done for everybody. Thanks for subscribing to the YouTube channel and on your favorite podcast platforms and hitting us up on social media at XFL Show. Uh, we love interacting with you there, so keep hitting us up. We want to know, stemming from last week, keep those coming in. The rule that you would get rid of if you had to get rid of one rule out of the rule book. We don't want. I don't want any rules gone. For the record, we keep reiterating that, but one rule, let us know, at XFL Show. That was last week's topic, and uh, people going back and forth about it, Bryant. But generally, what I gauge with people hitting us up, nobody wants to see that rule book change. It's, duh, I think is the first one, right? Because there was nothing that we didn't like. Um, but I think that's also a cop-out like you had last week. I think you had some sort of cop-out that. You know, probably you could have come up with something. I think everybody can come up with something that they want yeah. changed, altered, manipulated, done differently. Fine, um, but but yeah, I want two, we enjoy the rules. Two dedicated ball handling officials. That's what I my rule change. I want two. <laughs> two dedicated. You want more rules? More rules. 
Uh, we ha- we are <laughs> we're going to get into uh, also one other uh, topic that's going to come up. Some rumors uh, disappointing about the spring league. We'll we'll touch upon. Don't know too much about it, but a friend of uh, ours, Mike Mitchell, reporting on the the spring league and some issues in that league. We need to chat about as well coming up, Brian. So strap in, let's go. We are doing this because of Pretty Easy Podcasts. You could go to prettyeasypodcast.com today to get your own podcast started. Whether you are a, a, a veteran podcaster who's tired of doing all the extra work, the produ- production side of it, go to prettyeasypodcast.com. Get some help, a personal producer at a low cost to help you get your show done. Or whether you've never podcasted in your life and you've always thought about doing it and might need a little bit of help, Pretty Easy Podcast is the place to go. PrettyEasyPodcast.com. Hit it up right now, right this very second, and get started today. Quit waiting. Because uh, they make podcasting uh, pretty easy. Uh, let's think and dunk around the XFL social media landscape. Bryant, at my life's hero, is bummed that I didn't do a meet and greet when I was in Maine, apparently, for my honeymoon. I, I didn't, A, know that we had XFL show fans up in Maine, so that's my bad. We have fans? And we do. And two, uh, I didn't know that I was supposed to keep doing the work stuff. You're answering You're answering it wrong. What? What? What's the answer? It's COVID. Sorry, buddy. I thought I was actually oh. going to be able to. COVID didn't allow me to actually meet and greet what? next time. Actually, uh, my, my dad did teach me a good a good way to answer any question in 2020 he his answer for everything is well we could but we can't because you know covid (laughs) it's because you know you know cause covid covid i was late to this meeting but you know covid (laughs) sorry i I thought i thought my zoom camera was off during the meeting and because you know (laughs) covid covid uh, uh, yeah, you sorry. know what? It's actually so, kind of cool. Sorry to uh, we our have Mainers, fans everywhere. So, yeah, next time our I'm Mainers. in Maine, next time I'm in Maine, the Mainers, I'll I'll let you know where I am, and we'll have a lobster roll and talk some XFL. How about that? Next time, yeah. after you. Alan, know, do you remember in COVID? COVID. <laughs> uh, Alan, remember in Houston when uh, we were actually like kind of like. Not bombarded, but people would recognize us, I guess, in some way, shape, or form when we're down in Houston for training camp. Don't be modest. Was- Don't be modest. When all the, <laughs> all those panties were being thrown at us and <laughs> all the hooting and hollering. Yeah, I remember. Couldn't even enjoy our Pop Rock sushi in Houston because, you know, people were just, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it was, a, it was a good time. Yeah, that was interesting. Pop Rocks on sushi. It's actually pretty mm. good. It was very uh, good. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So next time, Alan, come on, pay attention. Let people know where you are, so if they're there, they can say hi to you. Unless you're in I, St. Louis, you don't say hi to them. Yeah, I will, and I will say hi to especially the St. Louis peeps for sure, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Terry on the XFL fan text line seven two four five six five four XFL. You can call or text anytime. Terry texted said, "All caps. Get rid of the OT. It did not work." JK, I love all the rules. Just get us players and keep the damn playbook. <laughs> uh, you know what? He he is right, though, because are we giving rewards points, by the way, on this fan line? Because Terry's really racking those up uh, now. <laughs> but uh, regardless, uh, you know, he's right. The, the OT did not work. We didn't see one point scored in overtime this past season. That's uh, true. It. I don't know if that means it didn't work, though, but uh, that he also added, or they added, Terry, they added JK. Uh, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get, get too far into that. The OT is, is great, even though no one ever saw XFL overtime played. Biggest regret of the uh, season. Alan, did you notice that the last time, or not the last time, but watching that uh, Clemson Notre Dame game this past week where it went into overtime and pushed SNL a little bit, mm. all I could think about was 2001 uh, Extreme and Enforcers double overtime pushing SNL a little bit. And, and probably, I would say, execs were not as mad this time as they yeah. were in 2001. Yeah, although I think they were probably a little disappointed because. Dave Chappelle was that was a big episode that they had, but it was. that game was nuts between Notre Dame and Clemson, and basically was like a play-in game for the college football playoff. If you know that ever gets played, because 
you know, COVID. COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. Paladin Demo on YouTube commented on last week's episode, Brian, and said that we should record uh, us playing Blood Bowl during slow weeks. Do you know what Blood Bowl is? I, I had to Google it, it. I Googled it. I had to look it up as it well. I was scared. Awesome. <laughs> I was a little scared I, when I Googled it at first. I but. definitely turned on my VPN when I Googled Blood Bowl. That's what I <laughs> But I found out what it is. It's a tabletop game, and I'm down for it. That looks pretty cool. It's like a seemed like a Dungeons and Dragons football game. Is that's what I gathered? Googling it. How about I, you? I thought it was a, a one of the one of the lower bowls in the uh, in the water boy. You know, you didn't make it to the bourbon bowl, so you go <laughs> uh, to the blood bowl instead. Uh, you remember when the mud dogs made the blood bowl? <laughs> Uh, if we could score the Blood Bowl, maybe we'll uh, start playing uh, as a sideshow. Maybe that if we bring the Patreon back one day, Brian. I don't know about it. We'll we'll see. Got a lot a lot of stuff going on. I don't know if we have time, but we'll. I might dab. Maybe if I get it for Christmas. Paladin demo. Thanks for the YouTube comment, and don't forget, everyone, you could subscribe to the YouTube show if you're listening to this on a podcast app. You can see our beautiful faces on YouTube. The videos are up alongside the audio version of the show each and every single week. So check it out. And if you're ready, Bryant, I'm ready. Let's get into some news from around the XFL universe from this past week. You want it? I'm going to give it to you right now. Cover two time. And first part is from Mike Mitchell, good friend of the show, uh, from XFL News Hub reporting that the spring league is having issues paying coaches and they're, they might face a walkout. Uh, according to Mike Mitchell, multiple sources have confirmed the spring league CEO, Brian Woods has failed to pay most of the league's coaches for the last two weeks. And so recently coaches have had meetings to decide what they're going to do about it. Now they played week three. There's one more week of action left in the 16, four week league. Uh, but that isn't good news for the Spring League, which has been mostly positive in, in terms of what the fan reaction, Bryant, people enjoying some Tuesday and Wednesday night football. Um, we did kind of put into question a little bit of what the Spring League was doing, right? They they used to be this like two team, you know, a couple players play a couple weeks and, and that was kind of it. Now they're turning this into like almost like an event, a four week spectacle. I don't even know if they're going to have playoffs or not or a championship at this point. Um but this is obviously something that is not good. You want your coaches, you want to pay the coaches. Uh, you want to make sure that they finish a season, as we've seen many times now. Uh, leagues not finishing season doesn't look good for your future. Uh, mm-hmm. So, And I don't think the Rocks are going to come in and buy uh, the Spring League. So uh, hopefully, you know, it's just kind of a miscommunication. A, 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 what would the AF call it? A payroll malfunction or something like that where that things are just getting held up somewhere. But uh, either way, uh, you got to pay your coaches, man. You got to. Yeah, that's that's uh, disappointing. And also, from this article Mike wrote, that all he I did not know this, and now we learned that players have been paying $2,100 to participate in this mm-hmm. league. So it's uh, essentially a pay-to-play league, and guys basically said, I'm going to sacrifice my health because you know COVID. And also, I'm going to pay the money to be in this league because it's on TV, and I want to get my tape out there. So that's that's the that. spring league's gimmick. That's how yeah. they did it back in yeah. the day, right? That's they charge players to come and play football for them, so they can play against other players and get that game tape. And if you if you just take a second to think about that concept, these guys are p- paying to play, and we've been saying like, wow, I recognize a lot of these guys in the spring league. Imagine how, the kind of talent the XFL could get because they're going to actually pay their players. So that also bodes well, I think, for 2022. Just seeing that the Spring League this time around, even during a pandemic, has gotten some notable names, some pe- some players people are interested in watching play football on cable TV. That's good news if you're an XFL fan. If you're a player or a fan of the Spring League, this is kind of a – rough situation if they're looking to move forward and continue their partnership on Fox and doing what they've been doing successfully for the last few years. 
yeah, there might be some unexpected expenses or something like that when, when it came to paying the coaches. I don't know if 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 the money just ran out. What I don't know what the spring leagues vision is, right? Because this is what they've been for quite some time. I don't know how long they've been around now, but for the season for the few seasons that I've been aware of them, that is their gimmick, right? They players pay them to get on the field. It's like a, it's like a model going to get headshots done, right? You get your headshot. You have to pay for your headshots. Well, that's what these players are doing. They're paying for their headshots, except it's on a game tape and you're on a football field and you're wearing a number. Um, that's their gimmick. Now, maybe the spring league is getting a little too big for their own selves. Who knows? You know, you're, they're out kicking their own coverage, maybe. So to use a little football reference there, but uh, hopefully this thing gets straight now. We can continue on with the spring league. Yeah, that is not good news. And then Mike Mitchell also writing about kind of the past dealings that the CEO of the spring league has had, Brian Woods, not a great reputation. So we, I, I'm very uh, worried about the future of this league. But I watched this week, saw some awesome play, saw a crazy running back run. I just love the play where – I forget what the, who the running back was. I think it was for the Blues. Um, but whenever Tarasenko? running back gets uh, – no, not Tarasenko. It wasn't Brett Hall. I think he got tackled. You know, just love when a, a running back gets tackled – but he land, but he gets whipped around and lands on the guy. The knee never touches, and they could just get right back up and run down the field. One of my favorite plays. Got to see that in the spring league this week. But who would have I thought? didn't get a chance to watch the game. I know one game got postponed or something because of COVID or so or something. Yeah, I think they're they had to move into a next week. They have to find a new facility. It's going to be a a rough finish. Who would have thought a, the spring league not totally panning out in the fall? It's a bummer. And I do love seeing on Twitter people saying, how's that work? And then people answering, well, at, technically it's the spring in the southern hemisphere right now. So that's that's why it's called the Spring League in November. How about you just answer the question with, because uh, you know, COVID. COVID. Uh, part two of this week's cover to the leader of leaders in the XFL and someone who was maybe on the track to be an MVP in the league. Josh Johnson has signed with an NFL team again. Bryant, the San Francisco 49ers will get the talents of Josh Johnson at quarterback. He will be the third string quarterback behind Nick Mullins and CJ Beathard with Jimmy Garoppolo on the shelf, possibly for the rest of the season. Josh Johnson bringing a veteran presence to well, I don't think I think he might even be suited up uh, this week. We'll see. Practice squad. Well, he's so many injuries they get. Of course, yeah. he needs to be suited up. You can <laughs> can have that man not suited up. And when you talk about PJ Walker playing behind Teddy Bridgewater, a bona fide starting NFL quarterback, if you ask me, Josh Johnson playing behind Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard, I would not be surprised if we see Josh Johnson play some significant downs in the NFL this year now. Um, Alan, I think you're right. There's a, a very good possibility that Josh Johnson plays more than anybody else because I mean, you look at the quarterbacks that they have there, Nick Mullins, CJ uh, Beathard. Uh, the only advantage they have is you that got his they... name, you got his name right, by the way. It's Beathard. Thank you. I appreciate it. Beathard. Just uh, calm down. <laughs> the only advantage those two men have is that they've been there longer. Josh Johnson, give him some reps. He's a proven leader. We've seen it. That clip you just played was with him telling. Um, his coach is to calm down. I got this. Just call the place. You want the full, stop all that nonsense. The, let's let's listen to the full classic Josh Johnson moment real quick. Coach, I, y'all doing way too much arguing and complaining. Call plays. Stop that. Stop it. You think he gets Norm San Chow? Francisco How do you tell Norm says, Chow that? You're Josh Johnson. You're, you've been playing a long time. You've been on every NFL team pretty much. And oh, has he been on the Niners before? I don't know if he's been with San. He might have been. Double check. I, I'm going to say no. It was one of the teams he hasn't been on. But he's going to get there. He's going to say, guys, just quit getting hurt. Call plays. Play football. Everybody here's getting injured. This team shouldn't be so beat up. Uh, but two young quarterbacks in relative to Josh Johnson. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see uh, how frustrated they get in San Francisco <laughs> and if Josh Johnson oh, gets a shot. Is, uh... Third time with this San is Fran- third time with San Francisco. So, what are you doing, Josh? Go to a different team that you haven't been on yet. Come on, what are you doing? 
Well, he's, uh, he's from Oakland, but they don't have a team anymore for him to go play for. So, is that a cheap true. shot? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> they beat they beat the Chargers though. Congratulations to to John Gruden and his team for watching Donald Parham drop that ball. That that was unfortunate for the Chargers, who chargered so hard. They chargered. Um, here's my thing. Why why is it necessary to throw a fade to par him? Why? The man is seven foot tall. Hold taller on. than anybody. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please now, may I have your attention, get ready for Bryant to be very angry with one of his patented Bryant rants. <laughs> Do I have patented rants? I didn't know I had these. Um, he is l- legitimately taller than most any defensive back in the league. You t- you tell him to get into no, the end zone. He is he is literally taller than all defensive. There's not even yeah. one close okay. to as tall as him. No way. Uh, exactly. You Six you tell him. That'd be great. You look. You, you say, "Hey, Donald, go to the R in Chargers." Stand there, and I'm going to throw it eight feet in the air, and you're just going to jump up and grab it. And you know what's going to happen? Either you're going to grab it, or someone's going to pull you down before you can. And we're going to do it all over again. There is no reason to throw a fade to this man. I don't put it on Josh John. On, excuse me, on Donald Parr. That is uh, just cannot. Yes, he should have caught it. Don't get me wrong, but the play was wrong. You have the man run ten feet, stand there, and say, "I'm going to throw this up. You grab it." Not fade, just this. Not that, this. So you're saying th- play three, was it three flies up? Just th- throw it yeah. up top and let the tall kid catch it. Yes, exactly. Aim for the goal post. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Hey, they hit him right in the hands, though. Probably should have caught that ball. It was in his hands. He caught it until he did it. So it's kind of his fault. Man. So much force with that man. You know, a, a tree that's five feet tall doesn't have that much force. You get a seven foot trunk, it's more force. The taller the tree. Oh, I I don't have my grip. My gripper somewhere is somewhere around here. But you gotta like get crunch. Those, gotta get one of those. Crunch get from the grip um, strength. So when you catch it and you fall, you just hold on to it, even as you land and smash your own fingers. And that would have been not a catch. Necessary. And a charger. I I think two things. One, if he wasn't a charger and on any other team, he would have caught it. That's just the Chargers' curse. And two, uh, if that was an XFL game, would that have been a catch? No, no. it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have because there was no. Control. He was going to the ground. Yeah, he was going to the ground, yeah. and it popped out. It, it his feet and knees were not the problem. It was no. the catch. It was the process of the catch, right? Or um, he would have concentrated more on just hauling it in than the feats, because in the NFL, you're you're. A ball catcher, you're oh my feet! I gotta get both my feet in, instead of oh I just gotta catch the ball. If it's the XFL, you're just like I gotta haul this thing in and let one of my toes drag. That's it. It's, it's I just don't understand mindset. the play call. Don't you can blame. give it to him on the two yard line. Say hey, fall forward. You're gonna break the plane of the end zone. I don't blame. I don't blame the play call. I mean, I don't. I hate fades. I'm not. I'm not gonna argue that. I don't like the fade, but. Maybe if so then you hate the play call. Game, he caught it. Eh, I don't hate it. It's a, it's a tall guy. You just said Throw you hate fades. Him. I do. He's a tall guy, though. You got to get the bottle up somehow. You you tell him, run five feet into the end zone, turn around, run backwards into the end zone, and I'm going to throw you the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, unfortunately, XFL game it was not, and catch, neither it was. So, Donald Parham, uh, we're still rooting for you. And it's good to see him in the spotlight, at least. For, and that would have been three for three in touchdown yeah. receptions. That would have been pretty good, sweet. He's, he's, I'm sure he'll make up for it. He's, he's that type. I can't wait to see him run. Still haven't seen him run downfield yet. We're going to get that, hopefully. He's fast, way. just not graceful. He's like a gazelle. All right. Are you ready to uh, get those tops cards and unbox here? This is a uh, – uh, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen – Welcome to the latest. Uh, this is a first for YouTube, an unboxing of uh, trading cards. That's uh, my. I'm just. I'm just looking for excuses to use this sweet handheld mic. All right, here we go. Brian's gonna unbox some trading cards. We're gonna talk about some XFL players and 
have some fun here in this week's Hot Read. All right, do you want to do like a Swedish accent during the, this? Because I don't I, have me do accents, you know, because BBR, I'm not very good at that stuff. I feel so like all I feel like all this unboxings I watch are I was watching like record player unboxings today. And it was all Swedish people. They know their. Have you watched the PS5 or the Xbox uh, unboxings? I, I've watched some of those too. I won't. Grown I won't men crying. Them. Yep, they're they're grown men crying though. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just rocking a plasma TV because you can't tell me anything's better than a plasma. It's the best. But that is neither here nor there. We're talking trading cards, Bryant. Let's get to it. So let's let's talk about this box. Have you seen these boxes, Alan? I mean, they're pretty sweet. There's XFL 2020. If you're not on YouTube, I'll try my best bring to explain it. The, it. But you got up to the you camera, got all the yeah. you got all the logos, right, of the East teams, and then you got the ones of the West down below. I mean, look at that. That's pretty, look, at the tops is like labeled, so it's shrink wrapped with tops logo. You know, everything on the back. I'm digging this. So here we go. So it's sealed. I bought a couple of these. I bought two of them, but I'm only open one because I'm gonna keep one for the history books. First, when was the last time you bought a box of trading cards? I in uh, I think ninth grade had my mom buy me a box of 1990 MLB tops cards because it had Sammy Sosa's rookie card inside. Ooh. And you knew for sure it had it inside? That, that was the guarantee by the guy that used to sell coins on the shopping network, Channel 22. Oh, you bought it from the TV? Yeah. Oh, I I used to buy them from a store on Magnolia in Burbank. I don't know if you know that trading card store. Yes, I do. No, that's I'd buy them yeah. from there as a kid, and I had a, a ton of those, those Topps cards, probably around their 89, 90 baseball and I snuck into the gar- last time I ever was allowed to touch a trading card. I snuck into the garage where we kept them because my mom didn't let me open them. She said, no, those are going to be worth money. You could have them, but you can't open them. I said, well, what the hell? So I snuck in as a sneaky, sneaky youngster one day and opened up a box. And lo and behold, Barry Bonds rookie card. But I unboxed it, so it lost all value. See, that's why I bought two. I'm, I'm an adult now. I have more monies, so I can buy two so and smart. do the same thing. Right. All right, well, let's so see I'm going to open got. up or open Hold one. On. I'm open this thing up. I'm hoping for a Josh Johnson. I need you to give me a Josh Johnson here. I'm looking here for a Flynn Nagel, if you got it. Give me a Ooh, Flynn Nagel. Is, these are nice little packs. Look, and I'll a, show you the picture. Get we're going to need a Terrence Garvin. A Terrence Garvin. <laughs> if you got it. All right, so I'm just going to take the first one on here. There's 10 cards on here, Alan. I'll open this up. Here we go. Tanko. Show the pack. Show the pack, yo. The pack's right here. Pack's right here. All right, Xbox, the pack looks good. Xbox XFL looks nice. It looks good. All right, here we go. And yeah, you got this. Go. Where'd you get these? What store? Uh, it was online somewhere. It was like sports cards or something like that. It was very shady at first, but here we go. ShadySportsCards.com, uh, everybody. Make sure you hit it up. <laughs> All right, so there's 10 cards in here, so I'll go with the first one. First one uh, from the – you should do the announcing, but it's fine. Uh, oh. Dallas Renegades. Uh, Dallas Lance Dunbar. Renegades. Lance Dunbar running back. Running, running back. back. Lance Dunbar. It's kind of quite has all the stats behind him. Did he play a lot? I don't remember too much. He was their, yeah, he was their bar- running bar- back. Yeah, he was he the running back. He was their pass. I think he's caught some passes out of the backfield. Do we get a bio on the back? Show us the back here to the camera. So the the ba- there's a little bit of a bio here. So I'll read it. Here we go. So five eight running back, date of birth, team Dallas Renegades, college, University of North Texas. Dunbar capped his U of North Texas tenure with three consecutive. 1,000 yard seasons establishing school records for with career highs in yards, touchdowns. The speedy back gained six years of professional experience with Dallas and Los Angeles before joining the Renegades, who took him in the eighth round of the 2020 draft. The 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 tat to Curtis Curtis Artist Paint Curtis Artist Paint was it Cameron Artist Paint? I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm on Roto Wire right here. And Cameron Artist Payne is called Curtis on here. I don't know if that's a, a <laughs> typo. But uh, Dunbar had 48 yards and a touchdown in the loss to the Roughnecks and caught two passes for 17 yards. So okay. a pretty viable fantasy option in XFL fantasy. Well, keep Good that card. stat up. Keep keep that game up, Alan, because now we got a wide receiver from the Dallas Renegades. Uh, Gerard Hurd, wide receiver. Uh, from the University of Texas. 
Hurts uh, spent the first season of his college career throwing passes at former quarterback and the final three catching them, converting from quarterback to wide receiver at the University of Texas sophomore in 2016. So uh, he was taken in the open phase of the XFL draft. He was waived a f- couple weeks into the season, and then that was when the Renegades signed Armani Edwards out of the CFL. So you could put that one mm. away. We'll put side, okay. <laughs> okay. I think uh, we're going to put six to the board right here, Alan, because Ooh. I have – Mr. Martez Carter, running back from the (laughs) Los Angeles Wildcats. Are you you kidding me? We got Mr. Excitement right there. Oh, (laughs) baby. No pressure, but I hear you can do a backflip. What's it going to take for you to to put it on display? Give me one more in the box. Okay, one more in the box. I'll come back. Carter flipped into the end zone. Hey, he told Jenny Tapp if he could get there one more time, he'd do a flip. This time, he delivered. It was a great time to call it. I had a chance to give y'all guys the up and over, and we went up, and we went over. Six to the boy! Six to the boy! Great one. I love this one. Frame uh, that he was one. Sele- <laughs> he was selected. Let's see. The Wildcats snapped him up with the 56th overall pick in the inaugural XFL draft. He's from Grambling State. Uh, two-sport athlete at Gramble- in, in high school as well. Uh, it says here with it. With the low center of gravity, he's a quick, elusive, and tough to bring down in the open field. He's tough to bring down, period. I like that one. That one might be my new favorite. That one I would frame easily the most fun game for a player uh, of the XFL season. Martez Carter still on our minds. Mr. Excitement, six to the board. Hell yeah, that's a good get in your tops tops deck there. I'm Sweet. digging that one. All right. Who would have thought? Number... I don't know. I don't know what kind of podcast content this is for everybody listening. Definitely check out the YouTube channel. Bryant's unboxing it's a, it's a... all these cards, but hopefully you're enjoying the audio version of us explaining it and just reminiscing about some players. Yeah, right reminiscing now. is all it is, right? We Going reminisce. back in time, talking about these players. All right. Uh, what is this? Number four here. Uh, going to St. Louis, Christine Michael, running back. Ooh, solid. Here we go, running back showing that on the camera here. Pull, pull uh, that all the way up, though, a little closer. So that was probably, you think that picture was taken in Houston when we were down there? Uh, it had to have been in, well, had they announced the ball by then? Yeah, they did, right? In yeah. Houston? Yeah, they had to have, right? Um, that has to, or maybe minicamp? Maybe minicamp. Maybe minicamp. Uh, the Battlehawks, the Battlehawks nabbed Michael with their first pick in the 2020 XFL draft, their first round pick. Adding wealth of pro, exper- pro experience in the background, Christine was a second-round selection with Seattle in 2013, also starring at Texas A&M. Uh, he also saw game action with Dallas, Green Bay, and Indianapolis. And was, let me see where he was in rushing. He finished. He split oh, time, I believe, didn't he? He he finished behind Jordan Tamu uh, and his teammate Matt Jones in yards. Uh, but he was still in the top 10, it looks like, or at least just outside the top 10 in rushing in the XFL. Check touchdowns, because I think they gave him the ball on the touchdowns. He had, Christine Michael had one touchdown. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. There you sure. go. Keith Ford had two. <laughs> uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie, Alan, you're going to have to talk about this one because it's defensive side of the ball. Uh, Durant Miles, defensive end for the Seattle Dragons. Pull that one up. Durant Miles. Doesn't uh, ring speedy, a bell. What position? A speedy defensive end. A speedy he's from Boise State. A speedy edge rusher. Miles registered 6.5 sacks and forced three fumbles over his final two seasons at Boise State. The two-time All-Mountain West honorable mention selection is an exceptional athlete who dubbed as a basketball who was dubbed as a basketball player in high school. Who doubled, excuse me, as a basketball player in high school. The Dragons made him one of their three defensive end selections in phase five of the draft. Durant Miles finished with ooh, one tackle on the season, no sacks, and uh, and yeah, that's it. J- just the head of, uh, of Steve Boharnay, who was cut after a couple weeks. So, um, yeah, he can, that's, that he was a player in the XFL, that's for sure. Durant Miles. <laughs> Well, we're talking about the tight ends who uh, 
can't hold on to the football. Uh, talk about the first round selection, Nick Truesdale for the Tampa Bay Vipers. Uh, first round pick, Juco, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. Well, here he, it has him as a University of Cincinnati, but I believe yeah, he came he was, out of a Juco. He finished, yeah, he finished at a Juco, I think, after that. So he he had a lot of catches, didn't he? Is, he was up there. He had a couple drops, uh, key drops, Big if drops. I remember correctly, in some of those. Remember, Tampa Bay kept shooting themselves in the foot in many aspects of their game. The, the, the best, worst team ever. All right, here you go. And, Nine catches yeah. for 91 yards on the, the sh- short season. As a first pick and a tight end that's expected to be on a Donald Parham type production level, I would say he underperformed for an offense that was very productive. Maybe it was because there was a lot of other guys just doing stuff on that offense. There was a lot of guys doing stuff on that offense. He was targeted, though, a lot. And I guess, yeah, drops could could be one of the – we have some questions coming up here. He might be a candidate for the answer for one of them. Um, uh, next one is Marquise Young running back for the Dallas Renegades. Well, Marquise Young, I feel like he might have uh, been – was he returning balls at all? I mean, oh no, but look at it, it. This is officially a rookie card. If you see the little RC right there, rookie card. A legit rookie in the league. He finished with 12 yards rushing, and uh, his longest was seven yards. <laughs> uh, Brant Weiss, defense, offensive tackle. Allen. This one would be a, a good one for uh, the New York Guardians. He was selected. Just reading through here. Is that a Toledo? Wasn't uh, my boy Storm Norton out of Toledo? Yes. Yeah, so second. I mean, if you're you're definitely not the best offensive lineman in the league from Toledo. I'll tell you that much right now. You've got the I'll second play. best offensive lineman from Toledo in the XFL trading card. Dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Try to see there. Okay. Uh, last two here. They um, all can't be winners, folks. But that's why you open up the pack. Now, how many times you get double tight ends from the same team? Colin Thompson tight end from the Tampa Bay Vipers. And I believe got a NFL de- uh, practice squad at least. He's in, he's on a practice squad somewhere in the NFL. Is he really? Yes. Pretty sure. Spring, 95% oh, he played it. sure. <laughs> I love this line, Alan. You'll love this right here. Uh, a two-year starter at Temple, Thompson earned pro looks from New York and Chicago before playing spring football for Birmingham in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> the league that shall not be named. <laughs> the That's other great. league. <laughs> he was contributing to multiple sports radio programs. Maybe he might be good for the show. And working out to stay in shape when the Vipers picked him up in the open phase of the 2020 XFL draft. And currently on the Carolina Panthers. So a Matt Rule favorite, Temple. He got picked oh, yeah. up. There you go. And uh, is currently on their roster, a pro- I believe, on the practice squad. Last one here, Alan. Jacquez Smith, defensive end, Seattle Dragons. Um, Big 12 guy selected in phase three of the XFL draft by the Seattle Dragons. Some pro experience in Tampa Bay, Detroit, Arizona, and Oakland in his pro career a relentless edge rusher with active hands and fine closing speed wait real quick sorry give me the name again i want to i want to check where yep. he was on my leaderboard here jacques jacques maybe smith q u oh damn where you have the guy who finished third in sacks in the xfl well, he might have been on our defensive player of the year list. No, he was he was not not at sure. all. Okay. No, but he was tied with like not five six other guys for with two sacks on the season. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm ranking these. I think or most valuable, Alan. That's right? I think one. it has to be Martez Ma, Ma, Carter. Martez Carter. Why do I think it was Montez Carter? I don't know. Martez Carter. Because you watch a lot of um, WWE. And oh, that is true. And the street profits are up. We want the smoke. Um, and then I think what would be the, my last one here? I think maybe Lance Dunbar. Did you say he finished second in rush? No, that was. No, I I think that Jack that Jack was Smith one. I like the 
the Colin Thompson one's great. I'm going to say it's a really good one because uh, rookie a, card. He's a guy we really want to have on the show now that we heard he does sports <laughs> talk. Uh, yeah, I think that's oh Christine Michael too. He was a rusher for the the, the St. Louis Battlehawks. Cool, that's fun, man. It's fun to walk down, to reminisce, the, reminisce about the players, but also open up a box. I, I'm reminiscing like I'm. You know, elementary school kid, because I used to do that. I don't, kids don't do kids buy it, trading cards and collect them and put them into a, a folder with all the little slots. You know, do you ever have one of those? The folder with I all did. the plastic uh, slots. I think I think I think they're all digital cards now. Yeah, they're every, all their trading cards fight on their phones now. That's how that works. <laughs> how many uh, HP yeah. does uh, Nick Truesdale have? Wait, before I finish the hot read, I want to ask you, Brian. Talked about these players. I did have these questions. Sorry. Yeah. Totally well, ready please. to get out of here. And then I remembered. Uh, not just these players you unboxed, although they they are candidates. But let's talk real quick. Overperformance and underperformance. Going into the XFL season, there was some hype behind guys. We personally thought uh, highly of players. What player overperformed to you, though, first off, based on your expectations going into the season? Or someone maybe who came out of nowhere or someone you didn't think would do that well but was pretty good in the XFL? Oh, I think overperformance, I think we got to say P.J. Walker. We didn't even know he was going to start over Connor Cook. That was the question going into the season. The man ended up being the MVP. Uh, that's the most obvious answer in my book. Uh, but if we're going to go down in the weeds a little bit, uh, man, I got to say overperformance, man. Uh, Luis Perez also comes to mind. You know, man got traded right before the season started. Didn't even start in New York at first. I uh, ended up having a good comeback a few few weeks there. Hmm. Who else, Al? I mean, you, you're better at these player things than I am, but I'm trying I to would, think. I mean, PJ's the obvious one. Will Hill, I thought, was over the hill and yep. was a leader well, for the For you, I selected him as my defensive, as my first overall pick in the defensive part of the draft. I before was not the a started. believer in. Uh, and Will, I thought he was benefiting from playing with great You thought he was Orlando. over the hill. But I, I thought guess. he was playing with great Orlando Apollos players, and that's why he looked good in that league. But he's Orlando Apollo good. players were playing with him. That's true. All right, what about underperformance? Uh, disappointment. Uh, you don't have to throw that word out. Maybe they weren't a disappointment, just weren't as good as you thought they would be. Uh, Elijah Hood stands out to me in, in L.A. He was a big running back. Uh, they selected him in their second round i want to say maybe the first round of their draft uh he looked really good in training camp and mini camp when i saw him big guy fumbled a couple times lost his job uh uh but then we got the mr excitement so that's all good too uh underperformance too uh you have to go with cardell our man cardell a lot of us picked him to be the mvp of the league and uh he disappointed mightily but wouldn't you just blame sonic the hedgehog for that Instead of I him. like Sonic. Yeah, I'm not yet. Yeah, leave Sonic alone. Quit blaming Sonic for Cardell. You know, I'm. I'm There's I'm other reasons that. we can blame Cardell now. I would say. Yeah, Cardell. Now knowing more that I know. Before. I'll throw Cardell under that bus. Also, he threw his own teammates under his bus. So he ain't ready. Throw, yeah, he ain't ready. He ain't ready. But also, I'm I actually re, you unboxing those cards, Nick Truesdale. I mean, he, but for a guy, they hyped that was, him. We, we didn't ever heard of him. Yeah, he was no, hyped. No. First overall, first round pick, tight end. Like, we, no, we went from no Shocking. expectations to the, this is our first pick. Oh, damn, this guy must be really good. And they've, they're going to be thrown at the tight end a lot. And he was. And then here tar- we are. He was targeted, but I wouldn't blame him for them. He had some key drops. I remember in that uh, game with. Uh, what's the first game? I want to say it was the second game against. Uh, I forget who they played their second game, though. Either way, DC? we had some drops. It might have been no. It was on. It was a night game, I believe, against St. Louis. No, I forget. Dallas, maybe. Either way, uh, they were disappointing a little bit there. Who did they end up beating? Because they beat one team, DC. They beat DC. Oh, they did beat DC. You're right. Well, there you go. Unboxing. It's fun Next, reminiscing. Throwing those players' names back out there. Don't forget them. Never forget them. And you might be seeing them again in 2022. We'll see. Not Cardale Jones though. I don't think we'll be seeing him. I doubt it. Highly Ooh, that's doubt. a good topic. Wh- which of the eight quarterbacks are we not, and which one of the eight are we going to see again? We talked about coaches. What about the, the the assigned QBs? 
I'm kind there's of, quite a few of them, actually. It is a good topic. We're going to put a pin in that one and bring it up uh, somewhere down the road. Uh, I promised Bryant that I'll, I'm going to pursue a guest for us for next week. And uh, we'll see what happens with next week's show. But this was fun. I'm bummed. One bummer for this, though. There were, I thought I was hoping you'd get a coach's playing card. Yeah, I thought so, too, because it is say coaches. The box says... Oh, it doesn't say coaches. It just no says... No coaches. Nope. May contain redemption cards with expiration dates. Ooh, I got to open all these see, up now. Oh, man. If I could get back into the, the, the old garage on one of those shelves where all those old cards are... Dust it off. I know I have a folder of all these old cards, and in the back I had the coaches on one page that I had. I think I even had a Buddy Ryan, but that'll be for another episode. I'll try to fly back out to California and get those. Your mom doesn't up. even live there anymore. She still has a garage with all of my old crap just thrown really high on a shelf. <laughs> it's oh, it's, it's tucked away. Just like, just like the, uh, the, the Tom, the, uh, the the Tom Brady Ark. football during the snow game. And the Lost uh, Ark. It's in <laughs> That too. That works. Uh, folks, this is the XFL Show. Follow us on all social media gimmicks, gimmicks at XFL Show. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, leave your comments, your reviews, all that you want there. Uh, you can also subscribe to our podcast. Uh, we're here every single Friday morning, unless Alan's getting married, on your favorite podcast gimmick. Never and again. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe and follow us on YouTube. Hi. Hi, Mom. Uh, you can check us out there. That's youtube.com slash this is the XFL show, the official YouTube channel of the XFL. Alan, what are you doing? I'm this showing is- off my sick Lakers Jack FM shirt. All right, everybody. Thanks for uh, watching or listening, unboxing with us, talking some XFL and XFL adjacent, as the cool kids say, topics. We just love football. We love watching Donald Parham and the Chargers go out there painstakingly get through a game looking good at times. Is this the week he runs down the field like a gazelle? I hope so. Uh, Maybe Kenny Robinson makes a big play. Or maybe we hear some news from The Rock and Danny Garcia, whatever the case may be. a little bit. We're covering it, and we're going to be talking about it here next week. We're going to be looking for a solid guest for you as well promise more of those to come and uh, just mow it moseying on down the road right now we're in mosey phase down the road to 2022 Brian, there's no need to exert yourself there's no need to work too hard just work do the work but don't you got you got to pace yourself this is a long haul we got here who was our friend in houston that kept traveling with the roughnecks everywhere they went prepare yourself for doing that in 2022 relax you know unbox some cards with us yeah. You know, listen to some old shows, some old clips, reminisce of 2020, because when 2021 hits in the midway point, that's when you're going to have to start getting that energy back for 2022. And that's where I will stop. I won't I won't be able to wear sweats during the show anymore, even if it's cold out, because it's just good. I'm going to need I'm, I'm going to need to be cool and calm and ready for anything but right now. I'm just relaxing. This is the way. And this has been Bryant and I'm Alan. This is the XFL show. We'll be back with you next week. And uh, how do I end this show again? Remember, they're listening. Remember, they're listening.